I've watched all of the controller improvement videos for Fortnite on YouTube and TikTok, and while learning, I've combined all of the tips into this ultimate guide. This way, you will achieve the best results after watching it, and I can guarantee you to have learned at least one new strategy by the time this video is done. The last tip is the most important one, so make sure to watch the entire video. Despite that, we'll begin with the hardest skill to master on controller, editing. We all know that if you hold your edit button down for a certain amount of time, you'll perform an edit. However, there's a nifty trick that can make editing super easy. You can bind editing to another button, or even keep it at the default button to avoid edit all the time. But, there's a catch if you do that. While using the default edit button, you can't look around while editing, unless you hold your controller close style. For context, close style users hold their controllers like this. So, let me share some other editing binds that are way better. First up, the joystick bind. Specifically L3, your left joystick button. It's one of the most popular choices among pros, and for good reason. It's super straightforward, practical, and works like a charm because you don't have to take your fingers off the joysticks. As you can see, I'm still able to look around while editing, which is a bit tricky with the default binds where you have to change your grip after each edit. Also, if you don't know how to change your edit bind, all you need to do is to go into your controller settings, switch it to custom, find the edit bind you want to edit with, and in this case for me it was L3, press it, and then select edit, then go over to the right and press your circle, then select switch mode, go over to your edit controls, and find the button you wanted to edit with, and this time select it as confirm. And there you go. Now there's also the touchpad option, which can be fantastic if you play in the claw grip style however if you don't you might face the same issue of not being able to look around comfortably but here's a unique option the d-pad which are those arrows on your controller it's similar to the touchpad and like it you'll need to take your fingers off the movement joystick to use it if you don't play claw but what if i told you that almost every pro doesn't rely on any of these popular binds in fact they have a secret method of editing that's known to only a small percentage of players this is something they call paddles for only 50 dollars you can get these game changing paddles they're a third party extension that you can easily plug into your controller and what makes them so special is that they give you extra buttons right where you need them. You can assign these paddles to do whatever you want on your controller. This means you can bind these paddles to your editing bind to make editing super fast and easy without lifting your thumbs from the thumbsticks. I promise you this is a game changer. It's like having an extra set of hands in the game. These paddles are also not just for editing. For example, you can use one paddle for sprinting and the other one for jumping or picking up loot. The options are endless and fully customizable. It's all up to you. For me, I would have personally gone for editing on the left one, as I know many pros use their left paddle for that, and interacting and picking up loot on the right one. Try that combination out and work around it if you didn't like it. Resetting builds on a controller can be a difficult task as it requires you to press the reset bind and then confirm the edit to reset. This process can be slow and even potentially kill you if you don't reset quickly enough. Fortunately, there's a solution. By enabling the auto confirm edit setting and setting it to both, you can reset walls without having to confirm the edit. This not only saves time but also reduces the risk of losing the game due to slow resetting. Tip 2. Building. Improving your building skills on a controller is essential, but it also may be hard. Luckily, there's a few simple settings in Fortnite that can make a big difference without you having to do any real work. The first one is called Builder Pro. Without Builder Pro, you have to pick a building piece and then confirm its placement with the same button press. But with Builder Pro turned on, you select and place the piece in one go with a single button press. This makes your building much faster, and especially when you're getting attacked. So, if you want to get better at building quickly without much effort, just turn on Builder Pro and you'll see the difference right away. Something you've probably noticed is that you can't crouch while building an edit. This is actually way more important than you think as you can use crouching to maneuver and stay hidden from your opponents. So to unlock crouching while building, you need to go into your controller settings, go over to the building controls and change the R3 button from rotating builds to crouching. As you can see now, I have full control over my crouching while building or editing. This might feel a bit weird in the beginning, but I promise it's worth it once you get used to it. Tip 3. Aim. Having good aim isn't too hard on controller, but there is one way to improve it instantly. This is by having the aim assist setting on 99% rather than 100. This is a weird thing to do, but a lot of pros use this and they have experienced better aim with it. So try it out and see for yourself. Having a good loadout is way more complicated on a controller than it is on keyboard and mouse. On keyboard and mouse, you can switch to any of the slots instantly simply by pressing a button. But on controller, you have to use your bumpers to switch one by one. This is why you need an organized loadout when you're on controller. Your loadout should look like this. The first slot should be a shotgun as it's very easy to switch to the first slot after building or editing. Your next slot should be a spray weapon or a long range weapon which is also good in close range. The next two slots should be heals and the last slot needs to be mobility so you can get away quickly or chase someone with a simple button press. Also if you don't want to switch your weapons all the time into these slots every game, Fortnite has a built in setting that will do this for you. It's called preferred item slots and simply put this order in and you're good. From now on whenever you pick up weapons or loot they will automatically go to these slots. But the real key to good aim on controller is a good sensitive so this leads us to tip 4, sensitivity. 
sensitivity is a really important aspect of both Fortnite and controller. You should also never switch your sensitivity after you've changed it because you'll be messing with your muscle memory. But if you're skeptical or don't like your sensitivity, you should try 40%. Most of the price uses a sense between 40 to 45%, so try it and stick to it. Never switch. Another thing which is really important is your look input curve. All of the pros are hiding this setting and it's really important. Look input curve is a setting that controls how fast your sensitivity reaches its maximum speed. On exponential, it starts off slow and gradually increases in speed, but with linear, your sensitivity starts off at its maximum speed, which can improve your reaction time, aim, and building. Also, with linear, your controller will react to smaller movements, overall improving the controller's responsiveness. The next thing is controller dead zones. A dead zone is a distance you have to move your joystick before the game recognizes it and detects it. Having a lower dead zone gives you faster response times, but can make your aim worse. You may also experience stick drift, but here's how to prevent it. Jump into a game of creative, lower your dead zone down to 5, then slowly build it up until your sticks stop drifting by themselves. Mine actually stopped drifting at 5%, but that's mainly because my controller is new, but for you, your drift may stop at 7 to 10 to 15. It's different for everybody. Now for the last tip, gadgets and accessories. If your hands are sweaty on your controller from playing many hours, it can be a really nice touch and advantage to invest in controller grips. For only $15, you can get sweat absorbing control grips. You very easily just slide them on and that's it. And also if you're sweating on your fingers, you can also get grips for your thumbsticks for only $10. Or if you want to take it to the next level, you can buy scuff controllers. These are very expensive controllers with built-in paddles, sweat grips, and thumb grips. You can even customize your own controller on their website. Personally, I think this is a waste of money, but still, some pros actually use these controllers. And finally, if you want more FPS and lower ping, you should click this video and the subscribe button, just like over 150,000 other people have done. I'll see you there.